So welcome, happy Saturday everyone, and uh, welcome to another study hall brought to you by Napa Valley Wine Academy. Uh, this is being brought to you live from Napa Valley. And today we have Catherine Bouguet with us, Director of Education for Napa Valley Wine Academy. And she's going to be talking about maps, how to use them as a study tool and for exam recall. And she's prepared uh, a great presentation for you today. So without further ado, uh, hi Catherine, welcome. <laughs> great, thank you so much, Chris. Thanks everybody for joining in today. Uh, one of the worst exam moments you can have is to freeze during an exam, forgetting some facts, important facts that you need to get those all important points on an exam. Uh, you know you studied the material and it's as if it left your brain. It's so maddening, so maddening. Um, maps can not only be a study tool to help you study, but they can also, also be a visual that you recall during an exam and you can use it to garner that information that you need for the exam. Like say you're taking an exam and you have a question about Bordeaux and the climate and influences. If you were to freeze and say, oh my God, what was it? Wasn't Mediterranean, not continental. Um, you picture the map and you see the Atlantic Ocean off to the west and you're like, oh right, the, the Atlantic Ocean influence right there, it's maritime climate. And so that helps you recall. And from there, you may even see on the map, Ah, oh, right, there were the Landes Forest and the sand dunes, and that protects from some of those storms. So that map can be all important for helping, helping with your recall. Uh, say you have a question on, you have to write about the key grape variety of Riospicius, and you say, well, what was it, what was it? You picture the map, and you're like, ah, oh, right, Riospicius was up in the northwest corner. So, ah, oh, right, it was wet. Um, cool. It was uh, a white grape. It went well with the seafood. It's a hearty, ah, bingo. And it leads you to Albarino. So maps can be so, so, so important for recall. However, what's even better than a map is your map. If you go ahead and take a copy of a map, whether you copy off something from the internet, trace a map in your study book, or even just hand draw a map, no excuses here, you go ahead and hand draw a map, this can help you because you can actually take a copy of that map and write in key facts. Say key facts like the grape varieties, the style of the wine, any influences. It depends on what level of course you're taking. Information that I created on the maps that I'm gonna show you today were taken from an advanced course, level three from WSET. However, you could do this for an intermediate course, level two, you could do it for more advanced courses. It doesn't matter. It's just a great way to recall. Once you've created that sheet with all the key facts, you could even at the top of your map, go ahead, put the climate, put major influences, whether there's, you know, topographically, are there mountains, are there large bodies of water, anything particular about viticulture, winemaking from that area, you end up with a summary sheet of from that country or region, and you could be reviewing that over coffee, after dinner at night. It is sort of your go-to, you know, so that you um, maintain those facts. And so it's a study tool along the way. But then at the same time, you're going to picture in your handwriting when you're in the exam um, facts that you can recall. So it's sort of wrangling the beast of information all in one summary sheet or multiple if you're taking a very advanced course. So let's go ahead and just take an example. We have one here on the screen, right? We've got Germany. So we've got a country here and we've got many regions, what they call in Baugebieten, um, to wrangle here. So if you went ahead and you took this map, you could say, OK, now um, I know that, OK, we've got the Moselle. That's in the northernmost uh, location. That's going to be the coolest so that can even help lead you to, okay, so the Riesling there, you know, that's the top grape there. Well, that's going to be lighter in body, lighter in alcohol. You might have floral and green fruits versus, you know, instead of riper fruits. So just knowing where it is latitude-wise can help you remember the style of the wine. 
Keep moving down. I mean, I didn't include everything here. This is just sort of a snapshot to show you, you know, but you, you take the faults and, and the faults here in the green, you know, sort of dark green, you know, um, uh, region. The fault, you know, has the heart mountains, and the heart mountains are a continuation, a continuation of the Vosges. Now, if you recall, maybe your your Alsace studies, you're like, oh, the Vosges. That was, you know, a um, that created a rain shadow effect, so it was very sunny and dry. Well, the faults, because the uh, the Vosges are are in the south uh, there, Alsace. Well, the same thing happens with the heart mountains. You get, you create a rain shadow effect. So you've got the driest area in Germany. You're going to have riper fruit flavors there. So it, all of this can help you recall, especially if during the exam, say you get in a question about, you know, comparing the different, you know, styles of Riesling in Germany. If you can picture it on the map, you can really, that can help you lead to some great facts for you to include. Now, no excuses, even if you're home and you don't have a way to copy a map, let's take a look at something you could do at home. Let's look at the next map. You can just hand draw in blobs. <laughs> just take sort of an outline of the country. It doesn't have to be pretty. Um, no judgment here because there's no excuses and no judgments. But just hand write in. You know, what is, you know, what are the names of the different regions? What are the key grapes? And whatever the, the facts that you need to know and recall. So this can be just very, very, very important to do. And they don't all have to, not that I'm saying this is very neat, but they don't have to be neat. In fact, you could be creating your very first version where you just um, close the book and test yourself. So you're like, okay, right, the Moselle was up here, the key grape is Riesling, you've got the steep slopes, you've got slate soils, you've got whatever you want to recall about the area, and then, okay, the style of the wine, therefore, because of where it is latitude-wise, you could see where I'm going with this. You could be writing all this in just to test yourself. You know, I used to take, you know, you print out, um, you have mistakes at the printer, I would save all of those pieces of paper, turn them on their backs, and use that to just draw my blobs <laughs> so that I could study, practice, you know, test myself. Um, I mean, let's go ahead and, and, and pull up another example. The next example is Bordeaux from Bordeaux.com. So you just got a nice blank map that you can either create a summary sheet or test yourself on. So this is another great, you know, sort of example to use for recalling facts right there at the top. OK, right. We've got the moderate maritime climate. Go ahead and put in major factors like there's the Gulf Stream that helps warm the area. That's going to help, you know, with ripening overall. But you also have the Landes Forest and sand dunes, um, whatever facts you want to put you know, up there, maybe up there, even put about vintage variation. You know, if there's extra room, of course, when we're talking about Bordeaux, you might want to talk about not just the Appellation, right? You might not want to just talk about the AOCs. Um, because since we're on this, this video, for those of you who are studying, what's the highest Appellation you can have in Bordeaux? Anyone? Okay, remember, it's just the commune, like Margot. Separately, you have to think about classifications. So you could include on your map classifications, you know, um, information, so that you have this um, study sheet, pour your morning coffee, and then you're studying each morning, but in a very relaxed way. Um, one more slide to just, you know, show you. I think this one is great fun. Well, I had fun with it. Um, but one last slide is, is of Italy. If we can go ahead and change to the uh, Italy slide. So the um, Italy slide is from Italian Wine Central. Um, we actually offer the uh, Discovering Italian Wine course, but I love this map. I have my students do it when I teach Italy. It makes you fill in, what, you know, what's, what are the 20 regione, those regions in Italy? And then what are the grape varieties? Because, of course, Italy is fascinating, you know, because for so long, politically and socially, they were, all these regions were separated. You've got all these fascinating different grape varieties that you have to remember. Great for drinking wine and, you know, for diversity. Not as fun when you have to study all those regions and top grapes. But a map like this 
from the discovering um, Italian wine can really help you sort of memorize that fact. So I don't know if I've got you excited about maps today. <laughs> they excite me. I use them all the time to test myself, um, but I hope it was helpful to you today. Thanks so much, Catherine, for that really short and concise um, instruction on how to use maps to, to study smarter uh, and not harder. Uh, join us back here again on Monday at 2 o'clock, where we'll have a guest, um, Master Sommelier Tim Gazer, who will be talking about uh, the effects of TCA, some new developments uh, concerning TCA and wine faults in general. And he'll be joined by uh, Master of Wine, uh, Peter Marks, who will be interviewing him on this topic. Thanks again for joining us today. Hope you as everyone is staying uh, safe and well, and we'll see you back here, hopefully uh, on Monday. Cheers. <music>